Here go the Boston Red Sox. There he is, Ned, your man. That's the space cowboy from Southern California. <laughs> He's never had a losing season in baseball. He had a one and three record when he first came up here, but that was in the later part of the year. In that minor league season, he won more than he lost, so he really has never had a losing season in baseball. He's a pretty good mutter, too, isn't he? Not too bad. This is his kind of weather. One of the things they talk about is move. Uh, he's got many pickoff moves. Uh, I know uh, the scouts who have scouted him say, "Be careful. Just watch him when the catcher returns the ball. He'll take that thing and quickly throw either the second or to first. It doesn't make much difference." So, but he picked off some 12 people. Well, he's got. Uh, you got to watch his head, Joe and Tony. Uh, it's the way that he uses the head fake toward first base. He'll go. Uh, he'll walk around that 18-foot circle. He'll go. Out toward second base, he'll do a lot of things. Well, he's kind of a surprise starter, as is Jack Billingham for the Reds in the second game of the World Series. I talked to Daryl Johnson, his manager, before the ball game, and said, "Why Bill Lee today? He's not done well lately." Well, Tony, basically, uh, we're pitching Bill Lee because our scouting reports say that uh, a pitcher of Bill Lee's type has uh, good success against Cincinnati. Number two, we know that he can hold people uh, as base runners on base very well. And uh, some of their best base dealers are left-handed hitters. And uh, again, according to the reports, we figure that the man has a little bit of an edge over some of our other pitchers. Pretty good reason, keeping the runners close. A couple of personal wars out here yesterday. I, it's kind of interesting to watch. There's his record, 17 and 11, 17 and 15, 17 and 9. Potential 17 game winner, as Ned Martin said earlier. I thought Fisk and Bench did a pretty good job of showing what they can do as far as the base runners are concerned. But today's a brand new day. And here is Pete Rose, who will bat right handed against Bill Lee. Pete Rose. Lee Rose. 2,547 hits. That's a lot of hits. And right in with that fastball. Both pitchers in today's ball game, low ball pitchers, if they have their control and they haven't been out there too much lately, you will see a lot of ground balls. That ball is rolling foul. Oh. Fish wisely picked it up because it looked like it might take a left turn on him. That's really no man's country. Nobody can give you any help when that ball starts to roll like that. You have to make the decision on your own. If you make it wrong, it'll cost you. Two strikes to count. Could be a little advantage for both of these low sinker ball type pitchers with a National League umpire behind the plate. They give you the low strike. You're really going to have to tag one today. That wind seems to be blowing in. Look him out, screwball. Three pitches, one out. This telecast is presented by authority of Major League Baseball is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience and any publication reproduction retransmission or other use of the pictures descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the commissioner of baseball is prohibited and Major League Baseball has the right of approval of the announcers for this event. That's pretty good pitch right there guys. Lee will uh, turn the ball over a lot. He'll throw the screw ball, keep it away from right handers. He'll cut the fastball and also run a slider in on a right handed hitter. Rose seemed to be completely fooled on the strike like he was trying to fight it off. Missed it and it's a strikeout and here is Morgan. Takes it high, ball one. Tony, I thought that Morgan made quite a point on the defense yesterday that the Boston outfielders were playing a little more shallow than Cincinnati and catching those balls. It was they were falling in front of the uh, Reds outfielders. And Joe, Freddie Lynn also said, he said, with something you can't learn through scouting reports, you can't learn it in a workout or playing here in one game, you've got to be here day in, day out. So there is a tremendous home park advantage for the Red Sox outfielders, who are good ones. One ball and one strike. 
Strike two. That's a good sinker he seems to have on the first two hitters. Ned, we have heard it. You have seen Lee many more times. There is Senator, Senator Kennedy. Ted Kennedy, also present here today at the ball game. Is it true Bill Lee at time will catch balls between his legs, behind his back, over his head, and standing on his head? Yeah, almost. <laughs> Off the handle, Doyle, tricky hop, gets his man. That ball took a tricky hop. Five. Two gutty men are out second base. They say that when these infielders from the Red Sox move to artificial surf in Cincinnati, it will be at a disadvantage. I don't know. Balls bounce much truer, although faster on artificial surface. Tony, I always felt if you could play, you could play on a handball court. Doesn't make any difference. And these guys can play. They have the shift on bench way around. Second baseman Doyle is to the shortstop side. There you see him. They have really stacked against him. Ball one. They didn't do it yesterday. There's a the screwball. Ball two. Now this one starts to get a little tight. Two outs, nobody on. Curveball and a beauty. He dropped one in there. Took something off the pitch. Two balls and no strikes. You're usually guessing. Apparently, John was guessing fastball. Turned it over in a straightaway center field. Plenty of room for Fred Lynn. Makes the play three up, three now. We go to the bottom half of the first. There is no score. Jack Billingham loosening up, and Ned, that wind seems to be blowing in. It's uh, we're directly behind home plate, and you're going to really have to hit one. Yeah, it's one of those uh, another feature of this lovely little ballpark that uh, when it turns around and it can in the middle of a game, the whole offense and everything changes. It's an east wind blowing off the water. It's a cold one, and you're going to have to really pick one off the dirt with a fellow like we're Billingham right and Lee now. today. Cooper. Here is Cecil Cooper. First place, Cooper. 318 as a DH, which is tops in the American League. Lines the first pitch down the left field line. It is. Oh, Foster had some trouble with it, and it's a two base hit. Ned, you know, sooner said it than it happened. Just as Foster was going to go into his leap for the ball, he hit a soft spot. This park does drain well. We'll see it. Watch his footing as he nears the warning track. He's going to jump, and there he loses the footing while just off the edge of the webbing of his glove. Here's another angle on it, and you can see the footing just give way. I'll tell you, tricky things happen in this friendly little ballpark. Well, that uh, the door you I'm saw alive. down in the corner also gives outfielders some trouble. It's a, it's not an easy place to get used to. Denny Doyle. Here is Denny Doyle, and if he goes according to the book, which he usually does, he'll hit the ground ball to the right side. Takes it inside, ball one. Didn't take long for this crowd to get something to cheer about. Cooper leads off with a double. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes. Yastrzemski on deck. Doyle, one of the best in the business at taking advantage of a man playing. And although the book says pull the ball, Rose is in at third, and he slapped the ball by him yesterday. Knocked down by Billingham. That's going to be a base hit. Nobody's going to get him. Moving to third is Cooper. First and third, nobody out. And here it is again, a base hit. Big, tall pitchers are not noted particularly for their fielding. Billingham is big. You can see he does not react too quickly. The ball almost by him with that follow through, falling off toward first base. Just got a piece of it. And this is the man of the hour, Carl Yastrzemski, who has really done it all. He has dominated this series. 317 lifetime home run. Two on and nobody out. All one. Yastrzemski is superstitious. Digs in with that back foot. Got a favorite pair of socks that he wears, baseball socks. 
Must be helping him too. Takes it low. Ball two. There it is. <laughs> now, man playing in the World Series, you think he'd get a new pair, but you couldn't get him to change, Tony. <laughs> That looks like the kind that Tony used to wear. Oh, well, you're Polish, <laughs> potato farmer. <laughs> Listen, man, the way he's going, he's going to buy two, three farms. Two nothing pitch. Right back to Billingham. He's going to go to second for one. They're coming to the plate. They may have a rundown. They do. Bad running by the Red Sox. Bench tags him out, and I'm telling you, they came within an eyelash of a triple play. Cooper hesitated. He should have come in immediately. And he hesitated. Billingham went to second, Tony. Well, Billingham right here, a couple of guys appear to be yelling to him to go for Cooper coming in from third base. He decides to go to the double play. Another alert play by Concepcion. He made one yesterday on the ball. Bench with a pretty good play. Now we'll see the tag by Johnny. And close as you said, he's thinking double play. There is Cecil Cooper right now hung up. That's, That's his job, though. It. That's what he's supposed to do. Force them to go for him. But Tony, Break up the double play. Tony, should he not have gone in as soon as that ball was hit? Stay I think away? he should get in a rundown and try and get there long enough to get both men to second and third, but Concepcion made a fine play. Billingham immediately elected to go to second base, and Cooper, had he come from the very beginning, would have been able to score. But he hesitated, which gave Concepcion a chance to make the play, and here's Fisk taking the strike. That's one of those plays that the coach says go in on the ground ball and get hung up to move the men to second and third. But he who hesitates ends up in a double play. Never heard of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have now. <laughs> That's Darcy loose enough for the Cincinnati Reds. No score. Yastrzemski's on at second base. Strike two on Fisk. Base hit. Yastrzemski will score. Carlton Fisk a clutch base hit. Tony, that's got to be a big base hit for no other reason that that mix a mix up with the base running has to get you clubbed down a little well, bit. Well, it's a kind of hit too that can break a pitcher's heart. He appeared to be. About to pitch out of what was going to be a tough jam, and then you get the base hit. But Fisk's done it all of September through the championship series. Here is Fred Lynn taking a pitch outside, ball one. Interesting, Joe. Some of the papers and some of the uh, Cincinnati people said the outfield should be playing more shallow. Geronimo is playing more shallow in center field today. Ball two. Man, I felt that that ball would have gotten by Griffey. You've seen enough balls in right field. That could have been some fun to them. Yeah, once it gets down and rolls around that corner, by right fielders that are unused to it have a, have a time with it. It's too bad the Red Sox for them. They ran themselves into an out there. Bouncing ball to Morgan. And that's it. But the Red Sox score a run. We complete one inning of play here. Boston one, Cincinnati nothing. Rico Petroselli to lead it off. Good day yesterday. First pitch, right field. Griffey's going back near the line. This could be trouble. Foul ball. Foul ball. Griffey really gave it an attempt. He hit the wall hard also. Another one of those tricky spots we explained to you yesterday. Ned, this is a tough spot, isn't it? Right in there, and a lot of fielders worry about the wall. Evans plays it as well as anybody I've ever seen. Griffey played it well there. Ooh. He looked at that wall twice as we saw it on the replay and actually had a play, but you can't blame him for not making it. The ball was in the park, but that, that's an awful tough play. It's a tough win, and of course, he's got a warning track he's not familiar with. When you know a warning track, you know a couple of steps you're going to be at the wall. Again, the home park advantage. Outside, one and one. These Red Sox. An aggressive hitting club. It's a first ball hitting ball club. Fourth on the all time Red Sox extra base hit. One ball, two strikes. Petroselli didn't have many hits in the 67 series, but two of them were home runs in one game. He can play this part. Curveball gets him. 
Big breaking curveball, and that's the first strikeout for Billingham. And that's where Billingham can be tough. Right-handed hitters, he can hit the outside corner with a sweeping curve, a slider, sinker ball, brush you back with a right pitcher comes in on you. His curveball has been giving him trouble as of late, and he was replacing the rotation by Freddie Norman, and it's just kind of a switch here. We talked earlier in the game, Billingham in his park, Sparky feels that he needs Norman as his middle relief man in a big series. Evans takes outside, ball one. Three twenty-seven after the All-Star game. They've got some fine outfielders. These Red Sox, Young, hit him. That's one thing that Larry Shepard, the Cincinnati pitching coach, and also Sparky said. They learned yesterday they've got to pitch inside, not trying to hit Evans, obviously, but move him off the plate so they can hang over the outside corner. I think many pitchers find that up here, Joe. You've got to move guys off the plate. Well, I think that it's understood by the hitter and the pitcher that half the plate belongs to one and half the other, and there's some hitters who'll go up there and say, I'm taking your half, too, and it's up to the pitcher to say, oh, no, you're not, and you give me back my half, and I'll let you have your half. Then he'll stick one in your ribs and he'll take the whole thing from you. And that's the way it goes as they slowly sink in the west. One out, and here's Burleson. He's first ball hitter and a pretty good hitter. Aggressive. Takes the strike. Second on the club in uh, game winning RBIs this year behind Jim Rice. Uh, Burley stuck a lot of little hits in there that got things done. I thought Yastrzemski paid him a tremendous compliment when he said that's the fella that we should be talking about. Low nice play by Johnny Bench. Boy I tell you he can do it all back there. He made that look so easy. I love to watch this because he shifts on the ball. Watch him just get in front of it. That ball was right in the middle when he if he'd have missed it it'd have hit him right in the chest protector which is what you're supposed to do. And that's the only reason they call it the tools of ignorance that you're dumb enough to let it hit you but that's the play pitch out and nothing happened. That's the first pitch out I've ever seen bench put on Tony. Interesting in yesterday's ball game, just like the championship series the team that was supposed to run didn't the team that wasn't supposed to run has and that's the Boston Red Sox. Two balls in one strike Evans a lead there he goes now foul tip they put the play on this time. Which I wouldn't be surprised that if Bench puts another pitch out on Bellingham, not too bad at control, will pitch out twice. Well, if you want to go three and two, but let's find. I don't out. mean now. Okay. Oh, not now. I wouldn't pitch out now. I'm talking about setting the bait. Well, with Bench's arm, he doesn't have to pitch out that much. A lot of room between first and second, as you can see. will stop at second. Geronimo has trouble picking up the ball, but Evans can't go anywhere. Billingham ducked that one. Here's Morgan. Watch the dive. Give you an idea of the intensity of the play here in World Series. He just missed it. We'll throw this to Ned. Is Lee a good hitter? How does he do in the batting he, uh, game free game? Just, just ask him. <laughs> no, he knows how to handle the bat, but he never had much of a chance because he was in relief for quite a while, and then when he became a starter, they put in the DH rule. They're looking for the button. I would be too. He's going to hit away, and he swings, and they got a pickoff attempt. And look out! He may go into center field, and Evans is going to cry. No, he's not. He better make a U-turn. And Tony, it's what you talked about being shallow. Geronimo could come in and charge that ball. Bench has him dead to rights. He's leading the other way. The low throw gets by, and Geronimo makes a very alert play coming in. You know, I think an adjustment the Red Sox outfield is going to have to make as we look at this again is they're going to have to learn to play a little deeper in artificial surface. The adjustment was made by Cincinnati as we watch this. There's Concepcion. Bench doesn't do this too often. He didn't throw the ball down in the dirt too often. He just didn't get that ball up is what happened. I mean, he uh, he gunned the ball good. Started it low. It a good shot showing that great daylight between the shortstop and the base runner. Here's a shot. They got him now. They're going to go to third. Here's the throw. They got him. Almost believed that Evans tried to play to draw a throw and take off because he didn't hesitate. Sure looked like it. He tried to set Bench up. There he is. He isn't 
Well, I don't know. He caught Bench in the middle. Bench caught him in the middle. He's out at third, attacked by Rose, but I think you're right. He tried to set Bench up, and he got caught. I'll tell you something, though, Tony and Ned. Concepcion had to put a little extra on that ball. If he throws one of those little infield fly jobs down there, Evans has got it. This Red Sox ball club, Ned, is an aggressive base of a base running club. And they don't run the bases, they haven't run the bases that well until the latter part of the year. They don't play station to station. I mean, one base at a time. They just take off. They don't have the team speed to make them a real flamboyant running ball club, but they try to take that extra base and, uh, and take the advantage if they can. They, they got these uh, Cincinnati Reds, Wary, I'll tell you. Out on strikes, that ends the inning, an exciting inning. So at the end of two, Boston won, Cincinnati nothing. Looking at the scoreboard, we have a camera out there. There you see it. This is the shot that he'll get from that scoreboard. I'll tell you, if you hit a ball off that scoreboard, the inside of it, you get the same feeling if you were inside a bell when it hits that tin. Your ears ring for about 20 minutes. Griffey will lead it off against Bill Lee, who has struck out three and has retired the first six men. Low ball one. The Red Sox with one run on the scoreboard, but very aggressive base run. One ball, one strike. Cincinnati bullpen is busy. Now this aggressive base running of the Red Sox, you can't go just by base stealing, but the way like Evans today here, uh, who do you attribute it to? Well, I think, uh, well, Darrell Johnson is, is, has done some conservative things, but he will leave it to the hands of his coaches a lot. Uh, John Zimmer at third and Johnny Pesky at first have been very instrumental in giving these guys confidence. Zimmer especially will send anybody almost any time. Keep Believe the that. pressure on. Well, they certainly have kept the pressure on. Here's the one one pitch. Bouncing ball. Cooper finds it in his glove. Says look at here. And he's got to play at first base all by himself. Tony <laughs> <laughs> playing shallow as you have to for <laughs> look at him laughing. He knows it. What the ball <laughs> player say found. you ought to be hunting pocketbooks. <laughs> Yeah, that took a quick hop, and he was there. You know, Johnson, I guess he really isn't kneeling Zimmer when he tells him, then go out and coach your usual game. <laughs> it's the way Zimmer plays it, that's all. He'll, uh, he's more than a traffic cop there. He just uh, runs green light a lot. Geronimo takes a curveball outside, ball one. Well, I'll tell you, in this series, you don't know if he's been a starter at a track meet or a third base coach. He's had him running. They won the first game 6 nothing. and Red Sox lead 1 nothing here. One ball, one strike, one out on Geronimo. This is Darrell's strategy. Keep the left-handed hitters off base, and if they do get on, Lee with his assortment of moves can hold them close. Third ball catches the inside corner. He started it right at him, and Geronimo backed out, and it caught the inside corner. Fastball <laughs> just misses. Two balls and two strikes. Rod Dato, the baseball coach of USC, must be proud today. Sit in the stands, one of his boys pitching, and Fred Lynn in center field, one of his boys. Look him out. College baseball is such a big part of the total baseball picture with fellas like Dato and Ron Fraser. There is Alex Graham is coaching at third. Three. And George Sugar coaches at first, and they haven't had any yeah, business. They've been the loneliest men in the ballpark today. Baker. Eight people up, Billingham. eight people back, four strikeouts. Billingham is not much of a hitter. Burleson. There you go, three perfect innings for Bill Lee. Three up and three down again in the third. We go to the bottom half. It's Boston one, Cincinnati nothing. Bottom half of the third inning, and Cecil Cooper will lead it off. There is Commissioner Kuhn, and in the Navy hat to his right is uh, Secretary of State Dr. Kissinger. Strike. Congressman Tip O'Neill is here with uh, Joe Cronin, former American League president. Congressman Toby McDonald is here. Saw Senator Kennedy. 
That's what baseball's all about. Forget about the problems for just a couple hours. Have some fun at the ballpark. And so far, the Red Sox have been doing that. One ball and one strike. Cecil Cooper off the handle. Joe Morgan lays back, makes the play. You know, Morgan was asked about the grass and the artificial turf, and he always comes up with such great Number answers. Five. He said, listen, I learned to play this game on grass. I'm a better ball player on grass. He is something. An artificial service, you can become more of an, a one-handed infielder. Ball always bounds up. You've got to get in front of more balls on the grass surface. Balls scoot on you, they take off, they bounce sideways. This is Doyle. It'll be an adjustment for him when they get to Riverfront. Doyle takes it outside. Well, they had a pretty good record on artificial turf at Kansas City this year, Joe. It's the only team, only place in the American League that has it all. And they went four for six there, but uh, had their troubles the year before. They actually played better on the road, Ned. You were saying? Yes, they were. They were the best road club in the league. They won 48 and lost 31 on the road. Off the handle, here comes Morgan. Hey, in between hops, but he makes the play. Now that ball would have been true hops on the artificial surface. Morgan showed what you have to do. One of the difference. Right. You've got to charge the ball more, obviously, because it gets to you more slowly. And it's an adjustment, but the infielders here for Cincinnati not only have fine ability, they think a little bit too, and they know they've got to charge the ball more. Yastrzemski takes a curveball low and inside. I think Reggie Jackson of the A's said it all when he said that Rice is the best hitter, Lynn is the best all around player, but I want Yaz on my side. You just can't measure the value of this fellow in a box score. Down a left field line, but it's drifting foul. It's this kind of game or this kind of series that shows Yastrzemski at his best. I don't care if he's 50 years old, he's a climax ball player. He did it in 67 when he had to. Anytime there's been a tough series, like now, he's got it. Outside, two balls and one strike and two outs. A climax ball player. That pretty well sets it right there, boy. I'd like to have that on underneath my picture. <laughs> you did once. <laughs> yeah, American Legion. Three balls and one strike, two outs. <laughs> Tell you another man who's done pretty well in postseason play, and he's right to the left of your screen now, and that's Jack Billingham. He's been here before, done very well against Oakland. 13 and two-thirds innings, giving up just one run and six hits. Yastrzemski draws the base on balls. That's the first walk given up. And here is Carlton Fisk and what he's meant to this ball club since he came back. In fact, he drove in the only run that's on the scoreboard after two were out. And that to me is always the toughest RBI in the world at two out RBI and he did it with Yaz on at second base so he had to widen his strike zone to drive it in and he did. <laughs> right on top of that plate. There's the strike. This had a 19 game hitting streak snapped yesterday so he starts a new one today. And I think along with Yastrzemski Fisk might be the smartest hitter on this club. He'll adjust to pitches and situations and he knows when to go with a pitch when to pull it. Oh, high curveball he got away with that one. When he first came up uh, everybody wondered if he'd hit in the major leagues. He was a great receiver always and he hit better in the majors ever than he did in the minors. And he adjusted uh, that way. He used to be strictly a pull hitter. Now he can go the other way. That's what he did the first time up. He's up there now with Yastrzemski at first and two strikes. Oh! Foul tip and it's held on to by Johnny Bench. If it goes directly to your glove, you're all right. Had it hit his protector, it would not have counted. So that ends the Today inning. One nothing at the end of three. Birthday. Man in the middle is the Hall of Famer Joe Cronin to his left, Mrs. Cronin, and to the right, Congressman O'Neill and Mrs. O'Neill. Hey, a blooper again. And today is uh, Joe Cronin's birthday, and they paid tribute to him here by singing him happy birthday. He played in the World Series in 33 and managed the Red Sox in 46. And Lee drops the curveball in it for one and one. And it's also Christopher Columbus's birthday and Tony Kubek's birthday. So there are three Hall of Famers in my book. Beautiful. Right to Doyle. Joe, an adjustment by the Cincinnati hitters. Pete looked like he was trying to hit that screwball or the tailing fastball the opposite field. 
Well, they tried it with Tiant yesterday. He went to the opposite field. In fact, uh, Bench, Perez, Forster, and Concepcion all yesterday went to the opposite field. Don't look now, but Bill Lee has retired the first 10 men that he's faced. And here is Morgan, who bounced out the second his first time up. It's one to nothing in the top of the fourth. Boston leading. Tony Petroselli is really guarding the line. You figure he's going to punch a curveball if he gets it, Morgan? I think he's doing it more. Morgan doesn't hit that way in case he punts. Wow. He can get a good angle coming in on a ground ball or a, a bunt ground ball down that way. Joe doesn't bunt a whole lot, though. He likes to pull the ball, or pull the ball left less against a left-handed pitcher. He spent a lot of time with Rod Carew this spring. He's amazed at the ability of Carew, but he hasn't been able to punt. Curveball is a strike. Lee has thrown everything up there except the rosin bag. Curveballs, sliders, fastballs, screwballs. He has really shown an assortment and great control. Foul ball. And he's kept it down, too. Uh, there's only one fly ball out. The rest are either ground balls or strikeouts. I wouldn't say it's completely a typical Lee game because he usually gives up about 10 or 11 hits, but he can shut you out. He had four shutouts this year. Well, I'll tell you, as Preacher Roy used to say, it is neatness is what they put up on that scoreboard. Inside, two balls and two strikes. Lee has pitched some games were with the amazingly low total of what mid 70s pitches 76 6, 77 hour and 30 minutes ball three three and two on Morgan and he's on that's the kind of game he'll work at to get the ball over the plate let them hit it one nothing Boston leading top of the fourth they got a run in their bottom half Ball four, it gets by Fisk, but uh, Morgan will not go anywhere except the first base. Here we go again. Now we we'll Morgan see it. yesterday. Today yeah. we got Lee against Morgan. Now we'll see that move. Yeah, this should be fun. You know Morgan's going to have to try it. Johnny Bench fly to center field his first time up. They overshifted. They'll not overshift. Time is called as Morgan. Cleans off his spikes at first base. He's standing in foul territory, just working on his shoes. Now he's ready. He says he does not have a good move to first, but he says I throw a lot of them over there, and they just have difficulty figuring me out which one I'm going to use. Well, he didn't even come set that time; just stepped in through. Here's a base hit in the right center field. He went with him, and Morgan will easily make it to third. Bench will hold it first, so it's first and third. One man out, and the batter is Perez. And, Tony, you made the point with Pete Rose, and he tried to go the opposite field, and that's what Bench did. Let's see now if Lee makes an adjustment to counter that and starts popping him inside with a slider fastball. It's a cat and mouse game, and when they start going with you the opposite field, to keep them honest, you got to jam them, but you got the friendly wall over here if the hitter is looking for it. Perez was out on strikes his first time up. We'll keep it away from him. That was in a pretty good spot right there. That was double play country. Joe, I was watching. Uh Fisk yesterday, he uses it seems his chest protector as an indicator where he wants the ball in the strike zone. Oh, Jaeger from the Dodgers will use that thumb or finger whether yeah. it's in or out. Morgan's at third and Bench draws the throw at first, a little lob throw. One of those uh, let him know he's aware of it. Let's see. He's gloving it. Outside. That ball was off the plate in a good spot. Obviously trying to keep the ball low and outside, or at least low, to get the ground ball to get out of this inning. Curveball. Going to be tough. Burleson gets one. Not in time. We're all tied up. One apiece. 
That's a tough play, Tony. Not much of an argument from Grammis at third, but Stark, Sparky Anderson was on the top step of the dugout saying Doyle cheated at second base. And let's watch Denny Doyle. He's way out in front off the end of the bat. Carlson makes a good play to get the lead runner. But what's Doyle Denny Doyle? Left field is he or is he not on the base? Don't know. I'd like to see that. I would say on that he was on the base. Let's see. This is Foster with Perez on at first base. Two men out and one run is in. We're all tied at one apiece. Inside ball one. Here it is at second base. Let's take a look at it now. He's got to have his foot on the bag when he gets the ball. There is the ball. Wait a second. Does he? <laughs> I think he might have just picked it up. Not sure. <laughs> on second thought, that's the old neighborhood play. He was in the neighborhood, Tony. I'll tell you what, I always say when they enforce the rule that a runner has to slide at the bag and not at the guy making the tag, then they can enforce the rule the shortstop or second baseman has to touch the bag. How's the, that for the a paid defensive was, answer? The preceding was a paid political <laughs> announcement on behalf of shortstops. That's right. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> you hear that, man? The old automatic, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I heard he did it very well, too. Didn't he? Huh? <laughs> like it was scripted. We're all tied, one apiece. <laughs> Looper's going to drop for a base hit. He hit that off the end of the bat, but just hard enough to get it over the head of Burleson. And Perez stops at second. Foster's on with the base hit. So after retiring 10 men in a row, the base on balls came home to haunt. And now a base hit by Foster in its first and second two men out. And Concepcion is the better. Concepcion. Touch up. Tony, I don't know if they're anticipating or guessing or looking, but they are definitely going up there with an idea of what they're going to do. It's like they're trying to hit the ball up the middle or the opposite field and if you're going to throw slow stuff off speed stuff as Lee has you better keep it down because if you get it up that's what you get the little bloopers over the infield if it's down it's the weak ground ball in the infield they're waiting longer on Lee definitely high screwball ball one I think what they're trying to do Joe is force Lee out of his pitching pattern they're the on base men Perez and Foster but they want him to go back to his fastball they're a fastball hitting club. They're trying to force him away from the off speed stuff. There's a fastball, and he threw it right by him, although Concepcion did get a piece of it, and now he wants some pine tar. He doesn't like that. A look of disgust, a guy stepping out of the box. He likes to get the ball and throw quickly, doesn't he, Ned? He does. He will often uh, vent his spleen on batters that do that, too. Does that mean he knocks him down? <laughs> <laughs> Not often. Is no. that spleen venting? <laughs> <laughs> he shows it a different way, the California way. One ball, one strike. Curve ball misses. Two balls in one strike. And all the umpires in the stands thought it was a strike. Lee wants a new ball now. He does get people mad at him sometimes. He got the White Sox furious at him that game in the rain where they won because he was throwing all that junk up there and they couldn't hit it. Can't really blame the pitcher. There's a fastball and it's hit straight away center field. Lynn got a bad break on that ball, gliding in, makes the play. He got a bad jump on it, but that speed will erase your mistake. Makes the play, ends the inning, and the bottom of the fourth, we're all tied at one apiece. Fred Lynn to lead it off, known to bunt when he leads off, known to jump on that first pitch. Just a good all around ball player. Tries to bunt. Foul ball. You're not that smart. He must have told you something. No, no, no. I'd I, watch him. <laughs> I, uh, <Lynn. laughs> you got the scouting report. No. <laughs> Listen, I watched him. Watch Bench get out of there. Bench, com he comes out of that shoot like Yogi Berra is the only guy that I can compare Bench to. Did I say that right? Where well, Yogi is still you. one and a half over him? I've seen him come out and throw guys at third base in bunt situations. Yogi, huh? Oh. And Bench comes out there just as well. Left field. Foster's going back to the wall. He's going to have to come in a few steps now. Makes that one hand grab with that glove that he uses like a tweezer. You know, Sparky told him to just go to the wall 
and try to catch it. And if it goes over your head, let somebody else worry about it. And that's not a bad idea, Ned. Well, uh, opposing outfielders have a problem. Claudel Washington, the A's, did have that problem. And the wind hurt him. He went to the wall but uh, and then came in, but the ball hit, it was hit off the wall. I don't know what you said yesterday on radio Joe but we said here sooner or later that wall's going to play a part in this series where we got 13 innings just about and hadn't been hit yet. The <laughs> only way it's going to play a part if it collapses. <laughs> Everybody's made such a. I tell you that workout day was really something. Tetraselli takes it outside one and one. They were taking pictures like they had just put up that wall. Mm. One ball one strike although yesterday Tian could have beat anybody anywhere wall outside two and one he was a good pitcher yesterday man Evans the on deck batter did he go around yes he did two balls and two strikes there are just certain games you get beaten certain games you lose they Reds were beaten yesterday I don't think uh, the Boston Red Sox saw the Don Gullet they're going to see no. in Cincinnati. He had he threw some good fastballs, but I've seen him go for an entire game where he blows the ball right by you. I didn't think that was one of his better games either, Tone. Three and two now on Petroselli. Got a little bit of rain coming down, but in the World Series, nothing bothers you. He has a simple sign, nice fastball. It's hit up the middle, and Concepcion has a big hop. Good sinker. Two up and two down. Billingham had a shaky first inning. And gave up a hit and hit a batsman in the second. Third. Two ground balls and a strikeout. A fly ball and a ground ball here. Here's Dwight Evans. It's a strike. We're all tied one apiece. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Outside corner. One, two strikes. Let's pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. Curve ball and he almost chased it. That's always a tough pitch to lay off and he is it's a tantalizing kind of curveball and you start leaning and you can't really stop. Well high school roundhouse. That's what it is. There it is again. This time he got him. Evans is out on strikes. Three up and three now. So as we complete four innings here the score is Cincinnati one Boston one. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by Major League Baseball. Here is Ken Griffey who bounced out to Cooper. Cooper put his glove down. There it was. Made a good play. Curveball is high. Ball one. Big sports afternoon here on NBC. You're watching the World Series, and we got Jack Buck standing by. Time permitting, old Jack will be there. And of course, that Oakland Raiders Kansas City Chiefs football game after this. And I don't care what the records are now. You got Oakland playing Kansas City. You got yourself a ball game. And Cecil Cooper's got himself another easy out. I guess that's one of the great rivalries in football the Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs and when you got a rivalry going you don't look at the standings you look to knock some heads that'll be coming on this afternoon how Kenny Stabler's knee is that's a problem snake Morgan's worried about him he's a great Oakland Raiders fan those runners they worry about knees mm. <laughs> other sports so you stay with us grandstand time permitting in Oakland Raiders in Kansas City this afternoon and Geronimo takes it low, ball one. Ned, you know this wind better than we do, but does it appear to be shifting or picking up a little? Seems like it's going more from left to right than it was previously. Hit off the end of the bat. Evans has got himself an easy play, had him played perfectly. That was a nice, polite swing by Geronimo and a nice, lazy fly ball. Number 43. Here's the kind of follow through that Garagiola would have butted on. <laughs> butted right by him on his left side as he falls over to third base and beating it out easily, wouldn't you? <laughs> look, where's he looking? <laughs> Let's see, look at that glove. There's an indication right between his legs if a ball is hit where he'll make the catch. Baloney. Oh, he he did once this year. Oh, come on. Where right. that glove was? Mm -hmm. Look at that pitch. That, that pitch changed time zones coming up there. It was so slow. 
You mean where that glove was, Ned? He caught one ground ball between his legs and a couple behind him. Uh, the glove went back farther. And he tells me he practices that play. You right. don't believe him that. in the outfield. Fastball right by him. Strike two. All tied up there. One one. Say what you want about Mr. Lee, but he's pitching himself a pretty good ball game. Is is Jack Billingham. One ball, two strikes, two outs, nobody on. We're in the top of the fifth. Boy, I'm almost rooting to have somebody hit one when he follows through like that to see it. Ground ball to Doyle. He boots it, but he's going to have time. Flip three up and three down. And so as we go into the bottom half of the fifth inning, we're all tied up, one apiece. We go to the bottom half of the fifth inning, and Ned Martin will be doing the play-by-play, -play, and Ned will... And what does that mean? Yes, it is him, America. You don't like that <laughs> hat? I love this hat. You right. can't put it on wrong. Either way, it's right. Sure. Then will carry you the rest of the way with the play-by-play. -play. We got a tight up ball game here. We got a good one. Thank you, Joe. And here we go with Jack Billingham taking his warm-ups, going to the bottom of the fifth inning, tied up 1-1, two hits for Cincinnati and four for the Red Sox, and very little to choose between these two pitchers. Billingham, uh, supposedly had a bad second half and he did but he is no indication today because he's had the Red Sox off balance they haven't hit real hard shots off him and he's kept the ball down as Lee has Burleson Lee and Cooper will be the hitters against Billingham before this umbrella crowd at Fenway Park and the rain is coming down harder now it's steady and it's going to be here a while. Here is Rick Burleson. Number seven. We got to get some uh, policing done on home plate. We've seen a lot of games out here in this kind of weather this summer. Some that have been held up an hour and a half, started again, held up again. Burleson is having a great series so far at the plate. There's a slider for a strike. He singled his first time up. Four for four in the series. Can't do much better than that. Hmm. One ball, one strike. They call him the rooster. His teammates started that last year because of the way his hackles stand up when he takes his hat off. Very intense ball player. Ball two. Man, he seems to be farther off to plate than the last time I saw him. He usually leans right in. Uh, I don't know why that is. Uh, he has changed his stance a couple of times. He went through a bad spot in the middle of the year and then came back well. Pronounced crouch. Strike. Got the black on the outside corner. Two and two. He's the kind of guy, Burleson is, that you always say of. You got to see him play every day to appreciate him. And it's so true of him and also Denny Doyle. He got him out this time. Burley doesn't strike out often, but Billingham got him, and that's number five for Jack. One down in the Red Sox fifth. Game tied, one all. Game two. And here is William Francis Lee. <laughs> Struck out swinging his first time up. Good bunt. Bench. What a play. Beautiful oh. play by Johnny Bench. Oh, baby, what a play. That's worth the price of admission. You just can't stop to think on that. You've got to pick up and throw. And the crowd appreciates this play. Watch him get out of the chute and grab that ball, and he's throwing right now. He was ready to throw. Tremendous play. Here's Here. what it looks like from that camera in left field. Yeah, the handheld camera to show you again. Bench getting out of there, and does he move for a big man? Great throw, and it was a good bunt, too. Beautiful bunt. And you can, with the weather being what it is, it was a bit wet. Sometimes you throw that uh, an uncalled for spitball on a day like today. I'll take Mr. Bench anytime. Oh, take him anyway. Cecil Cooper, one for two. Ball one. Coop doubled to left field his first time up and grounded out to second in the third. He can hit. Always around that 300 mark. A ball. 2-0. and 
If you were a general manager, how would you like to make a trade in which you got Joe Morgan, Cesar Geronimo, Dennis Menke, Ed Armbrister, and that, Jack Billingham? That wasn't too shabby a deal for him, was Bob it? Bob Housen did it for Cincinnati. Mm. Good stop by Billingham. Three up and three down. Nice play by Jack Billingham, the pitcher. And we go through five with a score tied up 1-1. One, one. Top of the sixth and Pete Rose up against Bill Lee. Rose 0 for 2. Hitless in the series so far. But not anymore. Base hit to left by Rose to start it off in the sixth inning of a 1-1 ball game. And Pete Rose... The model of consistency in 1975 as a switch hitter. He hit 323 as a left handed against left handers and 315 against right handers. Right. He looked like he was looking for that pitch, didn't he? Looking for the off speed yeah. stuff. Jumped no, right on it. He waited a long time ball. for that one. So the Reds now have the lead run at first. Nobody out. Attendance has come through, same as yesterday 35,205. Joe Morgan. Grounded out and walked. Right, fastball. There is Mr. Gowdy and Marty Brenneman. Kurt Gowdy on the right and Marty Brenneman, the Cincinnati broadcaster, doing radio today. Watch out. Morgan claims that it hit him. He's claiming that it got his uniform and plate umpire Nick Colosi says no. He wanted to appeal to the second base umpire, who is Dick Stallo. That's what Morgan is saying. Look out the second base. Stallo's saying, what do you want from me? I didn't see it from out here. The whole plate umpire called it. That's Nick Colosi. That's a little tough to ask a fellow at second yeah, base to call that there. play. Morgan says, all right. All right, Morgan says, all right. Yep. Well, let's look at, look at it. He claims it hit or nipped his uniform. Now you can't tell from there. Can't tell from that shot, but I tell you, he backed out there in a hurry. A ball and a strike. And Lee's move to first. Action in the Red Sox bullpen for the first time. A ball and a strike to Joe Morgan. And that's going to be nice. taken by Cooper. Throws over to Burleson, gets the out. Nice play by Cecil Cooper at first as they cut down the lead man. Cooper had a pretty tough play holding Rose on, as you can see on this slippery turf. It's been a little bit of a drizzle. Makes a fine play. Wow. Has enough composure to get the lead runner. Watch the hard slide by Pete Rose All trying right. to go after Burleson. It was one of the reasons that Rose doesn't run is to give Morgan that gap. And uh, Cooper makes the good play by getting his man. And now we got that little battle going again here between Lee and Morgan. And there's Dick Drago loosening up with the Red Sox, as Ned mentioned. Yep. First time Red Sox have had anybody out there today. Lee to first. Not in time. Joe Morgan. He every time you look around, he's on base. 67 steals in 77 attempts this year in the regular season. Four for four in the playoffs. Look at the lead. And Lee will go over there. Gene Mock had a great expression, Ned. He says, Joe Morgan, he says, first base is his address, but you better write in a hurry because you don't hang around long. He just rents the bag for That's a while, I believe. Does. And again, Lee. He'll do that a lot. He'll try to take a step away from somebody. Some runners he can but I don't think Morgan uh, will be bluffed out by it. Morgan actually gets a bigger lead as does Concepcion off left handed pitchers. The foul and the count is 0 and 1 to bench. Look at Joe marking off a spot right there. He's doing some groundskeeping. That's where he knows he's got to go that far. Tommy Harper who used to steal bases uh, by the ton for the Red Sox and before he came here always uh, always took about a five step lead and he never changed no matter how many times the pitcher went over no matter how good his move watch it that's what they mean about Lee going over there as soon as he gets the ball back tails away ball one one and one 
Morgan with interesting base dealing philosophies. He's very positive. He says, worry about getting back to first base, not me. He says, I've already got that. I'm thinking second base. And I'll tell you back again. I'll tell you how I feel. I don't think he'll run with bench hitting if they get two outs, although you'd have to be ready for him. I, I, he wouldn't want to take that bat out of this big guy's hands. But he's drawing throws. Oh, there he goes. There he goes. Look at here. He's got it. Out. Out. Got him again. Denny yep. Doyle making the tag. You got to give credit to Doyle, Tony. Good tag and a gun by Fisk on the proper side of the bag. The ball drifted right into the runner. Look at him get rid of the ball with something on it. Good call by Dick Stallow. Great position. Look where that knee is of Doyle's as Fisk throws the ball. He gives Doyle a chance to set himself. Good tag. That was a good tag. Throw was there, but I, good tag by Doyle. Good work by Fisk. Yep. Uh, Doyle blocked the base well, sure too. Sure did. Sure did. And I'm still surprised that he ran. Now it's two and one to bench. Nobody on. The shift is on again on Johnny Bench. Three infielders on the left side. Strike two. Sinking fastball. There they are. Doyle well over toward the shortstop way. And Burleson in the hole. And Petroselli up the line. Two and two. Two balls, two strikes. So Carlton Fisk, who was... Uh, Everybody said they're going to run all over the place on him. Has thrown out two in the series so far. And of course, you got to say, uh, with Morgan and the play and everything, that that is not the fastest track out there. It's heavy. To center field, Lynn coming on. He's got it. Fine play by Fred Lynn. Great. He slips on the first step as he started to break in. Now he's here from our center field camera with a great recovery. Second time he's done it today. And he has done this all year long in short left, center, and right field. Here comes another angle on it. Lynn out. Great catch. Innings over. Going to the bottom of the sixth inning. 1-1. One, one. Here it is again. The game inning ending catch by Lynn. And uh, actually, it has become rather ordinary here, Joe, the way he's done some of those things. The amazing thing, he just went like a gopher chewing up the ground, but that he didn't jar the ball loose when his elbows hit. I thought that might happen, too. Here is Denny Doyle, and they're starting to uh, give it the old Fenway frazzle here. They're starting to talk it up to Morgan at second. One out. There it is, the schedule for World Series night games. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, if necessary, from Cincinnati, Ohio. Boston Red Sox and the Cincinnati Reds. And we'll have the baseball world with Joe Garagiola. And it'll be on. We've got Foster Brooks doing the poem. Tony, super. We'll hear that one. Ball one. And at 8 o'clock on Tuesday, we got the bubblegum championship on the baseball world. The back club versus Oates. Johnny Oates. Pressure's on now. 1 0 to Yaz. Ball two. Yastrzemski has had a fielder's choice and scored the only run for the Red Sox. And he walked his last time up. Had a hit yesterday that drove in the first run and what proved to be the only run that Louis Tiant needed. Check swing, and it's 1 2 and 1. Ned, the Red Sox just refused to let the momentum change so far in this young series. Yastrzemski yesterday with a great dive. Lynn today picking off or throwing out Morgan. Morgan's trying to excite him, but they keep coming up with the good plays as they did all year. They're making a run at him. Face hit by Yastrzemski. So Yaz is on with a one-out single. Watch that bat of Yastrzemski's. He was wrapping it. He wraps it a bit here and then right into it and a great follow through. I think the interesting thing to me in this Red Sox, uh, the way they're playing, is they have not changed. They still run even if they're thrown out, and Fisk behind the plate has not changed his style. A lot of times you get a fast base runner on, they'll go for slow curveballs. 
he catches his game and he's going to throw the men out if they run. They have not changed. They're doing their thing. Fisk is up. He is one for two. Drove in a run with a single in the first inning. Cincinnati won. The Red Sox won. Bottom of the sixth. A beauty here at Fenway. And it has quit raining. But it's very dark. Ball one. What a difference in the style of left field play. There's the visitor, George Foster, just, well, almost down the warning track. Tell you what he thinks about the wall. He wants to be there in a hurry, as opposed to Yaz. We'll try and show you him later. He plays much more shallow. Foul, count one and one to Fisk. Geronimo is playing uh, a shallow, a relatively shallow center field compared to what he played yesterday, it seems. He's come in a little bit. And Griffey and right playing about like Dwight Evans. There's Geronimo shaded over a little bit toward left center on fifth. <laughs> Laid off the breaking pitch. Two and one. Activity in the Cincinnati bullpen. We look at Fisk. Pedro Borbon, one of the core of great relievers the Reds have had this year. He can use, Anderson can use four guys out there. And I, I, they remind me a little bit of, uh, there's what uh, is happening to the pitcher's mound now, a little bit of mud out there. But they remind me of the bullpen that Dick Williams had with the A's a couple of years ago when he had four guys that he can use either short or long. Tony, would you hit and run here? They do it with Fisk on occasion. He's got a big hole between Morgan and Perry. Had a notion on it, I believe. Two and two. Ken Harrelson, one of the TV broadcasters up here, the Hawk, told me that he thinks Fisk, for a big, powerful man, can adjust his swing and hit and run and cut down the swing better than anybody he's seen. Ball three. Three and two. Now, what do you do with your Stremski? Send him on his way. I would yeah, too. Yeah, send him, and I think that Darrell will. We're unanimous here. Yep, for the first time. Well, <laughs> I don't know. It. We've got two votes for no downstairs and one abstain. We say he's going. One up. Yep. And he's going to get second base. Concepcion bobbles the ball and safe all around. The scouting reports will tell you to play Fisk in the hole. He's a full hitter. Concepcion was cheating toward the back. He was not covering, but he was cheating toward the back so he could get there in the event of a double play. And the ball, a little unusual hop bouncing up. This is not artificial surface. The difference is Yastrzemski running. Concepcion lost his force out play at second, and the long throw was a bit too long to get Fisk. So Johnson starting his man paid off. Yeah, it did pay off. That's the first error of the series so far by the usually very sure-handed Concepcion. Freddie Lynn, foul ball. He doesn't make many of them. Concepcion rated by many as the best, one of the best in the game. But Denny Doyle's a big fan of his. You look at Freddie Lynn, who did everything in his freshman year. Concepcion has an arm, he's got range, soft hands. Doyle says puts him on a par with Larry Boa of Philadelphia, almost. Except Boa, uh, he played with the Boa over there. He has it second. Short right, Griffey, and the runners hold. As now there are two outs. So Lynn, 0 for 3 today, flies to right. And Rico Petroselli moves in. Petroselli yesterday with men on jumped on the very first pitch. They're a very aggressive ball club, these Red Sox. Lynn jumped on the first pitch with men on, and let's see what happens to Petroselli. I know if I'm catching, I'd have to say, give me some extra on that first pitch. Two for five in the series. He's 0 for 2 this afternoon, struck out once. One one ball game. Yastrzemski at second. The lead run, Fisk at first. All right, good breaking ball. 
What a curveball that was. I think that was the best curveball he threw all day. That can bother Rico, who used to be a very good breaking ball hitter, but lately uh, has not been as well as he had the fastball. Ball one. A ball and a strike to Rico. We got a dandy here. Yesterday it was about like this until the seventh inning. It was nothing, nothing. Today, 1 1 is Billingham and Bill Lee putting it on. Fastball that time. It's 2 and 1. Petroselli had. There's Yastrzemski at second. Got on on a single, and Fisk is over at first. If you were a guess hitter, you'd guess curveball. Oh. I right would. Right now. Didn't get it. Well, yeah, it had been a slider. Two and two. Petroselli had an inner ear problem that really bothered him this year. He almost had to stop the game. Uh, at first, he thought it was his eyesight. He tried glasses, and then he found out there was an inner ear infection that he's being treated for right now and will be looked at after the series to decide whether he'll play again. Ball three. Rico is often misread by a lot of people because he is a moody kind of fella, but he uh, he was really hurting. Three and two now. Runners will go. Foul ball. Have to do it all over. Three and two, two out, six inning, one one game. Petroselli hails from Brooklyn, New York, originally. Has been living here, but is moving to Florida. Next door neighbor to the home plate umpire, Nick Colosi. Colosi grew up, hung out with Rico's brothers. Rico's just a kid. Three and two. Base hit, is it? Yep, base hit. Jastrzemski will score. Two to one, Red Sox. Petroselli on a 3-2 pitch singles in the lead run. There it is again too, Ned, that big two-out RBI base hit. They got it from Carlton Fisk in the first and got it from Petroselli here in the sixth. That's worth double its weight. Fisk went to third on the play. So now runners are at the corners with two outs, and here's Dwight Evans. Hit by a pitch and struck out. Two to one, Boston, sixth inning. Six hits off Billingham now. All one. Three RBIs for Petroselli in the series. Evans had a leadoff single yesterday. And the count is 2-0 to Dewey. He uh, has trouble with the breaking pitch. They'll throw him a lot of breaking stuff. And he'll concern himself with it sometimes too much. But if you make a mistake on him, he's got good power all over. 2-0. All three. And you see this so often up in Fenway, more than any other park. There's Zimmer giving some signs. He's going to let him take a crack at it, I believe. He let Burleson go 3-0 yesterday, got a base hit. But the pitchers come up here. They're outside, outside, trying to be cute with the outside corner. They miss away. They're behind, and you're in trouble. Three balls, no strikes. Goes for it. They gave him the green light, which has happened so often in this ball club this year. I asked Daryl about Burleson hitting a three nothing and after I left him I thought boy he just gives everybody the green light he just wants to take advantage of the short left field fence and with three and nothing that's the one time when you're up there you can really pinpoint your pitch not only guess fastball but guess location low inside fastball you can really pinpoint it three and one there goes Rico. foul ball. Petroselli took off and with a foul lashed down into left. The count three and two now. 
Here's, here's that railing that goes out there that's always been the bane of a lot of shortstops and left fielders existence and also hitters because a lot of times it'll take a double away from a batter that's headed down into the corner and it'll hit that railing and turn into a single three and two ball four check with first base oh. umpire Larry Barnett he says ball four seen Benz do that before he tried to steal a pitch he Wanted to call it himself, try and intimidate or influence the umpire's call. He starts walking away. This looks like a trick you pulled, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Watch him after the pitch is made as he went around. Up. What's John? Hey. Oh, we got him. <laughs> I think he had a legitimate question. Yeah, I believe he did. He had a legitimate question. Umpires will say that's that's the toughest call to make, the check swing. Well, they're going to be a change of pitchers now. That is going to be all for Billingham on the disputed walk to Evans. Pedro Borbon, who used to be in the American League and now is over here in a fine National League pitcher, is coming on. There's a break in the action here at Boston. The score, the Red Sox 2 and Cincinnati 1. There you see the commissioner's official box, Mrs. Kuhn at the far end of your left, and Dr. Kissinger as we move over next to Commissioner Kuhn. Youngster or young man who threw out the first ball, and then Congressman Tip O'Neill smoking that cigar with the brown cap on. Mrs. O'Neill, Joe Cronin, former general manager here, Mrs. Cronin next to him. And that was uh, Herb Schlosser speaking to the commissioner, president of NBC. And Congressman McDonald is behind Congressman O'Neill. Mrs. McDonald, Bill Solisich is here. And the sand guys are out on the mound. You covered the whole ball yard I right there. I covered everybody. <laughs> covered every bases with all the executives. Kurt did that That's yesterday. That's known as job security, Tony. <laughs> job <laughs> security. <laughs> That's what it is. You all did it again, didn't you? That's right. The contract. <laughs> if you want us to get a shot of Mr. Yawkey, Ted was going to be glad to do it. Ned would be glad to do that. <laughs> okay, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> and there he is. Go ahead. Mr. Thomas Yawkey up there. <laughs> Haywood Sullivan, uh, to your right as you look at them. Uh, Haywood Sullivan, the director of player personnel. Mr. Yawkey was cited by Boston for the first time the other day. They gave him a copy of the old North Church, a replica of it, and uh, honored him. Pedro Borbon was 9-5 in 1975. He'll be facing Rick Burleson with the bases loaded. The Red Sox leading 2-1. The sand they have put out on the mound and around home plate for better purchase by the pitchers. It's really not sand. It's some sort of dried fertilizer. Pardon the expression. There is a strike. Nothing in one. Bases full of Red Sox. Fisk at third. Petroselli at second. Evans at first. And Burleson one for two on the afternoon. Pedro Borbon. Inside past bench but just a short one. One ball, one strike. There is Fisk at third base ready. And there's activity again in the bullpen for the Cincinnati Reds. This is McEnany who appeared yesterday. Will McEnany working again. Fly ball, center field. Geronimo there, and that wraps it up. For the Red Sox, a run. They had a couple of hits. There was an error and three left. And going to the seventh, it is 2-1 Boston. Well, time permitting, coming up next will be Grandstand, and that'll be all the highlights and scores of all the activity. And, of course, it's a big sports afternoon with World Series and football. In fact, there's one upset in the making going on right now in the first quarter. Baltimore leading uh, O.J. Simpson and Buffalo 14-0. Jack Buck will have all the highlights for you on Grandstand. And then we've got the big football game, Kansas City and the Oakland Raiders. And that's always a beauty when those two teams get together. So... Grandstand, time permitting, followed at uh, oh, this game, the Oakland Raider and Kansas right. City game. We have all the highlights and what have you. Right now, we got a beauty right here, Ned. That we have, sir. Tony Perez leading off against Bill Lee. Red Sox leading 2-1, to one, out hitting the Reds 6-3. to three. Strike to Perez. Perez is 0 for 2, struck out and had a fielder's choice, but has an RBI on the fielder's choice. One of the Red Sox runs is unearned. 
tailing away with a screwball. The count is one ball, one strike. Red Sox have double-barreled action in their bullpen. Pop foul. That's coming back out of play. Joe, they still look like they're looking for off-speed stuff off him, almost giving him the fastball. Perez was right on the pitch, and it was an off-speed breaking ball. He's spotting it well, though, Tony. There's our handheld microphone, microphone. Camera from behind the left field wall. Pass Jastrzemski in toward home plate. One and two. Two and two. As you watch Fisk catch, the big guy really gives his pitchers not only a good target, but he takes the monkey off their back by just going there and saying, here's where I want it. Just outside, ball three, three and two. Presents quite a target, too, Joe. He really does, and uh, he, he, he locates the ball for you. After he gives the sign, watch him just move over there. Lee walks Perez to open the seventh inning. Second walk given up by the spaceman, and it's one on, nobody out, and George Foster coming up. So far, Tion and Lee have done quite a job on this Reds hitting attack. They're the top run scoring team in the majors in 75. They averaged about 5.2 a game. Well, uh, you can see why. The first 15 innings of this game. Foster. Foster's not the kind of guy you'd expect to bunt, but Rico's playing a little bit in. I think he's going to hit. He does. Fly ball left center. Lynn right there. One out. He was going for it. Foster has the long ball power anyway. And figure you might as well get it out and see if you can hammer one somewhere. One out and Dave Concepcion. The shortstop. Ned, I get the feeling that Bill Lee wants to have right-handed hitters try and pull him. He hits him on the end of the bat, and they hit those weak, lazy fly balls. Johnny Bench made that comment before the series. He said, sometimes we have trouble with left-handers that uh, turn the ball away from us. All right. I was watching that shot we just had on there. He was cross seams, Tony, and then all of a sudden he switched with the seams. The cross seam is when he's cutting the fastball. That's how he does it. He did it behind his back, too, which is uh, you get somebody like Grandmaster Shergi or the guys on the bench. Now watch him. There's with the seams. That's a sinker ball style of holding a pitch. Very high to shallow right. Evans playing shallow, but Doyle is there. Who's got it? Evans. That'll give you an idea of the kind of range Dwight Evans has in right field. It's very spacious, as you know, here in right. He took that ball almost on the infield. He did. And he didn't have that far to come for it either. And you infielders love that, don't you? Let the sure man have it. That's the outfield. <laughs> <laughs> See where he grips this one, Tone. Ken Griffey is uh, 0 for 2. He's grounded twice to Cooper. One was a difficult play, and the other one an easy one. Very fast, Griffey. Off the end of the bat, strike one. Let's look at the holding of the ball now. He's changing it around with the seams again. Dipping low, right, the sinker. One sinker. ball, one strike. You can bet me there are a couple guys on that bench watching it. If they've been watching it the whole game, it hasn't helped. You know, you can know what's coming. Just like, I guess, when you get a lot of rain, that water's coming in the basement, but how are you going to stop it? <laughs> Ned, are the stories about Lee and his relationship, there's a the Cincinnati bench, his relationship with the bullpen fans out there true? Oh, yeah, he plays catch with them. Uh, he warms up, as we saw before the game, twice the 60-foot distance. Uh, very big favorite out there. One and two to Griffey, another sinking fastball. But Lee, uh, he'll aggravate some people, too. <laughs> there, he used to have barbecues, did he? Is that true for the fans out there? Yeah, he'll light a fire occasionally. <laughs> Call for some pennies to be thrown to him. and. Left-hand pitcher. He loves to uh, go in the outfield, too, to, to take a lot of fungos. One ball, two strikes. Two and two. It's Red Sox two, the Reds one. Reds batting in the seventh. Game two, and then tomorrow, a travel date. 
and on to Riverfront Stadium on Tuesday night. Rick Wise will go for Boston. Strike three. Little delay there in the call by Colosi, but it is a strike. And Griffey doesn't care for it. He is called out on strikes. Nick Colosi with the call. Going to the bottom of the seventh. Boston two, Cincinnati one. Back at Fenway Park, this is Ned Martin with Joe Garagiola and Tony Kubek. The Red Sox leading the Cincinnati Reds two to one, and Bill Lee first up in the seventh inning after a rain delay. Lee has gone 0 for 2. McEnany is the pitcher for Cincinnati. Will McEnany coming into his second appearance in two days. Strike. Lee tried to bunt his last time up, dropped a nice one down the third baseline, but a fine play by Johnny Bench got him. It'll be interesting to see how these two pitchers react to the delay. Another bunt attempt, and that's a strike, and the count is 0 and 2. Lee in uh, in his dealings with the rain and he's had a lot of them this year has reacted very well it hasn't bothered him quite so much as it might some other pitchers that uh, have a hard time getting loose again don't know about McEnany strikes Lee out and that takes no time at all and Lee is out of there one down on the top of the order Cecil Cooper coming up number 17 Cecil Cooper first base Cooper Cooper is one for two. He doubled in three trips. Double to left in the first inning. Red Sox have two runs and six hits. Cincinnati one run, three hits. They've made an error. Strike. McEnany was second in the Ameri in the National League in 1975 in appearances. He had 70. Gene Garber of the Phils had 71. Nothing in two. Doesn't seem that McEnany has been bothered by anything, and he is quickly ahead of Cooper. <laughs> That's a major league ball one. <laughs> you're going to waste one. I always thought that was bad, though, to even call it a waste pitch, but if you're going to waste a pitch, that was a waste pitch. Major yeah. leaguers, right, Ned? Down to Concepcion at short. Two outs. Number five. Kenny Doyle up. Doyle has had an infield hit Kenny in Doyle. three trips. Doyle. Three for six in the series. He always seems to be in the middle of things, offensively or defensively, making things happen. Ball one. There's a drive foul down into right field. Doyle had a lot of doubles for the Red Sox this year, comparatively speaking, and uh, they always were in the lines. It seemed that he would dunk them down into left field or sometimes get his pitch like there and, and double right up the first base line. He doesn't pull many, but he's, he sprays them all over. He's got that defense on us, they'll say that. He had 21 doubles in the 97 games he played here. Fouls it off. One ball, two strikes. He had a couple of very big doubles. There's a shot of McEnany. A couple of big doubles in the last two weeks of the season when every game meant something. Two and two. One of them was a bad hop hit past Shambliss of New York. Another one hit the first base bag. A couple went down to the left side. Checks his swing on that. Two and two. Glad to see you talk with Jimmy Rice, Tony. He's uh, quite a young man, isn't he? he? If he is dejected, he's sure hiding it well. I know he'd like to be in there. Ball three. Three and two to Doyle. Two outs in the Red Sox seventh. Red Sox two and Cincinnati one. Strike three call. He got him. Quick inning for McEnany, who looked very, very sharp. And going to the top of the eighth inning, the score, Red Sox 2, Cincinnati 1. Pinch hitter. Hit. Then
There are the bullpens in action at Fenway. On the left, the Red Sox bullpen, right-hander Dick Drago, and the left-hander throwing now, number 43, Jim Burton. And Raleigh Eastwick, the third, warming up for Cincinnati. Ned, we saw uh, Tony uh, interviewing down the uh, interview area during the rain delay, but you know that he had to go visit his friend, <laughs> don't you? Well, I assume that he and uh, I Kissinger happened to cut walk up a few by Doctor and Mrs. Kissinger, and they were he was in the Red Sox dressing room, and a couple of good insight. He's really a baseball fan, Ned. And Joe, he said, uh, surprise, isn't it, that Red Sox are running so much? Pretty good. And he not said, too, not too bad. Isn't it going to change when they get to Cincinnati? In his diplomatic fashion, obviously, he knows it's going to change when they get there hey, in that uh, hometown. Park. Listen, uh, Peta Hopper, how is, uh, how is Nance? Nancy is doing just fine. <laughs> well, I'm glad we have you along. Get all his social notes here. Uh, we need it. <laughs> Our roving reporter. Yeah. We're going to have a, let's see, uh, Bill Lee taking his warm-ups. He'll be allowed a lot, of course, with the rain delay. All he got for warm-ups afterwards was striking out. And the spaceman has pitched three hit baseballs so far. And well, we got a chance here. Certainly uh, want to say hello to our friends at Armed Forces Radio and TV. There are 399 radio stations worldwide, 90 television outlets. will be delayed a week. The uh, million and a half U.S. service and civilians it will see and hear the World Series. NBC's coverage. Not too bad. Looking at that people warming up uh, Lee and Fisk number 20 oh yeah here we go Navy Navy day to day oh. here 200th birthday oh. of the US Navy Lee and Fisk the battery at one time were one two men as player reps on this ball club Fisk was a player rep and Lee was assistant now Lee is the player rep Fisk wanted no more part of it here is Geronimo leading off and lacing one to center field, but Lynn is there. One out. Ed Armbrister was in the on-deck circle in the event that Geronimo had gotten on. Now he goes back to the dugout, and Merv Rettenman has come out. Ned? Uh, Merv Rettenman, who is uh, one of the two American League players, ex-American leaguers, who ever played in this park before, of the Cincinnati Reds. Rettenman was a fine outfielder with the Baltimore Orioles. And uh, actually, he was an unfortunate spot. He was a number four outfielder when they had Paul Blair and Don Buford and Frank Robinson. And he was considered one of the best fourth outfielders, but he never really got a chance. Went over to the National League a couple of years ago and uh, hit 239 this year with two homers and 19 RBIs. Had a couple of sensational years for the Orioles. There's that change up, popped up foul, Cecil Cooper there. Two outs. Rettenman batting for Billingham, or for the uh, pitcher, rather, McEnany, fouls out, and there are two away in the Cincinnati eighth, and he started him off with it that time. It's unbelievable. Usually when you have a, a, a pinch hitter coming in, you want to show him smoke because he's been sitting there, especially on kind of a cold day like today, but he went the other way. Stremski is playing mighty, mighty close. The batter, Pete Rhodes. Yes, playing the shallow left field. Drops it over, strike one. Rose is one for three. He singled the left his last time up. Petroselli standing down at third. He's about got one foot in foul territory. One and one. Really guarding the line. There's Rico policing around there. He was over, way over toward the bag, and that's where he'll go now. Again. Don't want to get Rose anything down into that corner because that's a sure double. The way he hustles on the bases, even one hit off the railing might be a double. Mm. One and one. Right. Fouls that one, one and two, and that got Colosi, I believe. They're not taking any pitches. They know Lee's been throwing strikes most of the ball game. He's been ahead of the hitters. They're going up there wailing. And he might become a little effective now because they look like they're all swinging for home runs. With that little tailing fastball and change of speeds, he becomes even tougher. Lee pitched in a game last year, fellas, that uh, was in almost unbelievable. They had a rain delay of an hour. They, the game took about four hours to play, and he pitched the thing. 
That's a base hit. Rose is on with a handle single over Doyle's head. So the Reds have the tying run at first with two outs in the eighth. Two for four for Pete Rhodes. And that's the fourth Reds hit. And Mr. Trouble here for any Red Sox pitcher, Joe Morgan. Been on base twice again today with a walk and a fielder's choice. Grounded out his other time. I can't imagine that there's not much Fisk can do because he gets as surprised as some of the hitters I'll bet with Lee pitching especially with that slow curveball he throws. Yeah, might be a pretty good thing to steal on. Two away. Morgan standing in. He's well up on the plate too in front of it. He wants to try to get that ball before it breaks. Chopper charged by Doyle. Got it. Morgan out. Lee dashes into the dugout and it's no runs. A hit and one left. Going to the bottom of the eighth. Two to one, Red Sox. We'll be bringing you grandstand right after this game. We're bringing you up to date on all the highlights and what have you. The Baltimore Colts were upsetting, uh, midst of an upset. It's 21 17 in the third quarter, Baltimore, so an upset in the making. But Jack Buck will have all the highlights. We have some highlights of this game and highlights of the football. And then at 4 o'clock or thereabouts, we'll have the Oakland Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs. That's right here. So where you got that dial is the spot to be. Grandstand. And I think that Oakland Raiders versus Kansas City Chiefs says enough. Don't look at the standings when those two teams play. They go head and head right now. There's a pretty good study of young Eastwick. I like the shot on the right hand corner. That's what I like. Raleigh Eastwick <laughs> who had 22 saves. I tell you why you get a good. Now I watch the pitcher's head. Now he looks to the ground and looks yeah. up. Not I thought you one. meant the lower right hand corner because uh. they included the catcher. Ah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at the top. Now watch. He looks at the ground, and that's where he picks you up. I always wanted those pitchers to look at me. You know they were going <laughs> to get me out. I wanted to know where them to know where I was. Be honest about it anyway. Right? That's right. <laughs> Eastwick was some kind of relief pitcher. He had 22 saves right. this past year, tying Al Roboski of the Cardinals for tops in the right. National League. He appeared in 58 games, won five, lost three, 22 saves, and had a 2.60 earned run average with a rookie. Eastwick from Camden, New Jersey, lives in Haddonfield now. Here's Yads. Carl Yastrzemski, one for two today. Strike one. Bottom of the eighth, the Red Sox leading two to one. Eastwick, a power pitcher, he comes in throwing strikes as does McEnany's slider, tailing fastball. Long drive toward the wall in left center. It is going to be caught out there by Geronimo as the wind held it up. Ball well hit, and on a day with no wind, it might have made the wall. One out. Number 27, Carlton Fisk. Carlton Fisk has one hit today, an RBI single in the first inning. He's one for three. That's his hit in the series. He came fairly close to the wall yesterday with a fly ball. Ball one. But nobody's hit it yet. If you're looking to the Reds ninth inning they will have the meat of their order up bench Perez and Foster against Lee. Popped up maybe room for bench back near the railing. Nope two rows up. As you noted yesterday very little foul ground here for the catchers in Fenway Park. That's good. Not only on foul balls, but on those pass balls. Right. In the old can... days in Pittsburgh, before they even moved the screen up, you could run for a week and a half on a pass ball. And guys would score from second. Second yeah. base, and they'd blame the catcher. <laughs> you have some sadistic knuckleball pitcher out there, and then they'd blame you. A ball and a strike to Fisk. Two and one. Here you got the shot from downtown. 
good shot of Fenway Park. Two and two. That was a strike. Carlton Fisk from New Hampshire, one of the few New Hampshireites in Major League Baseball. There's his manager, Daryl Johnson. Not time to grin yet, Daryl. 2-2 two, two to Fisk. Still 2-2. Two and two. <laughs> Defeat, there we legs. Go. Defeat legs. Defeat uh -huh. legs. Defeat the red legs. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. They're running away from it. The slider, three and two. Sparky Anderson, crew looking a little bit tense right now. Three two to Fisk, and he walked it. Fisk draws the walk, the first given up by Eastwick. Freddie Lynn coming up. Lynn is 0 for 3 today. Grounded out, flat out twice. As you can see, he did it all. He's right in 1975. One strike. Oh, Johnny. He came into the All-Star game this year, a rookie pick, and... Uh, Said he'd never seen so many fastballs thrown. He'd been throwing, seeing so many breaking pitches in the American League, and they threw him fastballs and got him out in the All Star game. Ned, you've seen one of the nice things an umpire will do dust a plate when it doesn't need it to give Johnny Bench a chance to get a breather. He took one of those real shots off the leg, and Colosi gave him a little time to get his pieces back in order. Good point. A bad rip that time by Lynn. The count 0 and 2. That one of the things I like about Lynn is even if he's not hitting, he's still a big contributor to winning ball games. We've seen it already today, a great catch he made. That's one and two. No, he doesn't get down on himself, and I think that was a uh, very big point about the fellow you interviewed, Jim Rice. He was uh, even more so than Lynn. The, the 0 for 4 days don't make him hang his head. He comes back. Just got a piece of that. One and two. I saw a quote by Lynn when they asked him, you know, could he believe the year he's having? He says, uh, well, maybe someday this winter when I'm out in a boat fishing, it might be uh, jump right out at me. But he said, right now, it's too much day to day for me to worry about it. Looking at Roger Moret in the bullpen for the Red Sox. One and two to Lynn. Eastwick on the mound. Out of play. Would have been a great replay, not the foul. Moret blowing that little bubble out there. He's out of the competition. He's, uh, he's one of the Garagiola losers. He was uh, a pretty good one, though. He had a, had a shot at it for a while. Yeah, I he think. was all right, but he didn't. Uh, he, he lost. It didn't quite. you got to have something going for you, Ned. There's no joke. Very high, not too deep, right center. It's going to be Geronimo. Two outs. Lynn is out. Fisk returns to first, and here is uh, Pitko Petroselli, the guy that put the Red Sox ahead in the sixth with a two-out single. There is Moret. Roger had the best winning percentage in the American League this year. Rico is one for three. Ball one. Is Rico quitting again this year? Well, it's not this time of quitting. Uh, he is going to be examined by a doctor, though, uh, on this inner ear thing. If they figure that it, he's taking heavy medication for it now to keep it down, but if there's any chance of it flaring, I don't think they would want him to play because you get hit in the head or if something happened, why uh, it could be dangerous. Two and zero. Oh. He did uh, say last year he was going to quit, and then decided to come back. Uh, he wanted to be traded. And a lot of things went through his mind. He had the problem, uh, litigation off off season uh, several years ago, which he eventually won, of course. But things like that bothered him. And uh, he's he's been a heck of a ball player through ten years here.
There the base hit to right. Looped in there. Fisk will hold at second. Griffey picks up. Two on, two out. And number six has done it again for the Red Sox. Just a little handle hit into right field. Dwight Evans, a batter. Red Sox uh, trying to get an insurance run here. A little pad run in the eighth. They lead two to one. Evans is 0 for 1. Been hit by a pitch, struck out, and walked. Gerano, though, is really directing the outfield. He's got Griffey playing very shallow in right. He's playing shallow in center. Evans has power out in that direction, right center, once in a while, Ned. Yeah, he does. He can't hit there. Right, good pitch by Eastwick. They're daring Evans to hit the ball over their heads in center and right field. I don't think Fisk could score from second base on a ball hit to right field. As shallow as Griffey's playing. No way. Have to hit the gap. Up and in, ball one, one and one. The trouble that Evans has sometimes is when he gets a couple of shots and hits that wall or the screen, and then he thinks I'm a pull hitting home run hitter and uh, sometimes misadjusts. One and one to it. Ball two. There's that situation again. Pitch away, away, get in trouble, get behind. Lay back, wait for the fastball. Good pitch again. Called strike. Count is two and two now. Evans not caring for it. One thing about leads that I've noticed here in this ballpark, Ned, you saw it all year. You got to get a pretty good lead off second base because that ball does hit that wall. If they play it perfectly, you're still going to get nailed. So yeah. instead of a four-step lead, Fisk has got a, a good lead at second. Fred Lynn used to take big leads off there this year too. Out of play, two and two. Just a medium-speed ground ball hit between third and short sometimes can be tough to score on. Foster now has shortened up quite a bit. Yes, he has. He's not playing out near the warning pad. Two and two. Two outs, two on. Foul ball. Ned ain't checking on that one. Excuse me, Ned. If you're an infielder in this situation, one thing's got to be on your mind. Knock the ball down. You've got to dive to stop that ball from going to the outfield. One thing that could hurt, I guess, on that wet outfield is the ball to die there before somebody gets to it. Right, three, he's out. Eastwick got him on the inside corner. No runs, a hit, and two left. And going to the ninth, it is two to one, Red Sox. The preceding announcement was furnished by Major League Baseball. So here we go to the top of the ninth. The Red Sox leading the Reds two to one as Bill Lee will face. Bench, Perez, and Foster with Concepcion behind them. Lee has pitched a four hitter. The go ahead run by the Red Sox was unearned. That's the kind of ball game this has been. Tough, tight, caught. Here's Bench. Base hit, right field, maybe more than one. Evans tracks it down. Bench will take two. Double. Tying run at second base, nobody out. Ned, we didn't get a chance because he hit the first pitch, but they had shifted on him. They are throwing all their strength towards left field and the third base line. And Lee hung a ball outside and had John pull it. He had a tough time pulling it through for a base hit, but he went with it. And it's an extra base hit. And here comes Daryl Johnson. Johnson out to talk to Lee. It's been a long while since Lee has gone nine innings. And that was then at April, the August 24th game. Figuring on what to do now with Bench at second base and the tough part of the order still coming up and of course with Cincinnati every part of the order is tough. Tony Perez a right handed hitter to be followed by Foster and Concepcion. They're going to go to the bullpen. They want the right hander Dick Drago to come on to pitch to Perez. So Bill Lee who will get a uh, quite a hand here as he leaves. Here it is. Everybody up at Fenway and the Red Sox faithful. Lee worked eight innings plus, giving up five hits and one run. Walked two, struck out four, 
and gives way to Drago. There's a break in the action here at Boston. The score, the Red Sox 2 and Cincinnati 1. There is Dick Drago, the hard-throwing right-hander who saved two ball games in the playoffs, one uh, official save. He bailed out pitchers twice, and he did it by just throwing fastballs, Joe. He, I think, is a throwback to the, I would I have to call the old-time relief pitcher who comes in and throws strikes. Uh, we, we went through a period where we had the kind of, uh, oh, what would you call them, the knuckleball, the screwball, the forkball type pitcher. But a guy like Drago goes back to the Joe Page or Ted Wilkes, that kind of ball player, a uh, pitcher, or relief Raditz. pitcher who just, Raditz is another guy, just rear back and throw as hard as he can into the strike zone. He's got a sinking fastball, and you can look for the fastball, but again, it doesn't mean you're going to be able to do anything with it. Yet, had a good uh, fastball. Let's take a look at this uh, play again with uh, Jenny Bench going into the right field with the pitch. And that's what he did right there. Doubling to right field to set up an entirely different ball game now as Drago comes on to try to bail out Bill Lee. Drago appeared in 40 games in the regular season. He had 15 saves, one, two, lost two, and had an earned run average of 3.84. And the first man he'll face will be Tony Perez. As I mentioned Drago, uh, he had a 17 game winning year at Kansas City as a starting pitcher. He just became a short reliever this season. Last year they had him as a starter and a reliever. Perez 0 for 2, 1 RBI. Fouls at strike 1. Perez, a 109 RBI man over the season. Third in the National League behind Greg Luzinski, the Phils, and teammate Johnny Bench. And he wants very much to back one in right now. You look at that Petroselli, would you, Ned? Garden that line at third. I'm looking at the Drago. That's a mean look there. One ball, one strike. We got an interesting thing going on at second base. They're playing so deep. Burleson right now is trying to get some instructions from the bench, uh, from the Red Sox bench, because Johnny Bench at second base is getting a tremendous lead. He's 12 for 12 in stolen bases. You take him for granted, and he's going to be hook sliding in the third. All right, we'll see what gives now. One and one. Doyle bluffing toward second. A chopper toward the middle. Burleson will have to play to first. He gets his man, but Bench goes to third. No other play could be made on a medium speed ground ball toward the center of the diamond. One out and the tying run at third. George Foster, the hitter. Number 13. And a big, big spot for Drago. George Foster. Our statistician, Foster. Alan Roth. Production stage manager, Jim O'Gorman. Field supervisor, Huey McDermott. Our thanks to them. The Red Sox bring the infield in. Doyle and Burleson two or three steps off the grass. The outfield shaded to left on Foster with power from the right side. He's one for three today, a single in the fourth inning. The Red Sox want to cut the runoff if they can. Now Burleson wants a word with Drago, and Fisk comes out. One thing that Burleson did establish himself this year, Joe, was the fact that he could be the field leader and the Red Sox haven't had a take charge guy in the infield for a long while. Now the manager is going to join. I can't blame Daryl for wanting to come out here to find out what's going on. I'm sure that one of the things they're talking about is the possibility of a squeeze play and just what exactly is going to happen. Do you knock the hitter down. Do you throw away from him. You want to set that up in your mind. And Burleson I will say this and I'd love to see it. If there's any doubt in your mind at all, call a meeting. Now's the time to call the meeting, not in the clubhouse when you say, man, I wish I'd have gone out there and said something. They get everything squared away. There's really no strategy here. They know how to pitch to Foster. And if Drago's going to get out of it, he's going to get out of it with his good sinking fastball. This is not the time to think. This is the time to throw. Red Sox have a couple of people throwing in their bullpen. And so do the Reds. Okay, here's Foster. There is uh, Jim Willoughby as the right-hander, Jim Burton the left-hander in the bullpen for Boston. Check swing, strike one.
big spot here. I want to try to keep an eye on where Fisk locates this ball. Ned, this is a big pitch, I think. One strike to Foster. Bench at third. Out of play, strike two. So now Drago has the edge on Foster, 0 and 2. Your decision behind the plate now is do you go out and get him right away or do you throw this pitch, set up your one ball, two strike pitch? Well, yeah, a hitter like this, you might do that. Two strikes. Just missed. That's that, what he did. That was a great pitch because he was going to the outside part of the plate, but if he was going to miss, he was going to miss it to the outside and not give him that good pitch to hit. But here's where he's going to go get him. We'll look, take a look at that pitch. Now, if you miss, you miss outside, which he did. If he misses inside, he's in trouble. But i got to believe he's going out and getting him right now. Here's your pitching decision. One ball, two strikes to Foster. Out of play again. He's keeping it away from Foster. Not wanting him to get anything down that he can pull. Yastrzemski's playing him straight away and shallow and left, but uh, respecting his ability to hit it toward the line. Lynn is shading him toward left center. There's Yaz. They bunch him up to left center field and give him a hole in right center field. Ooh, jammed him that time. That's what you call fighting off a good pitch. If Drago could pick up a phone and ask for a pitch he could throw, that would have been it. That high, tight, fast ball, he had extra on it, and Foster just fought it off. Had he hit that ball, he wouldn't have been able to drive it anywhere. He just fought it off. So you're really seeing a battle between a pretty good relief pitcher and a pretty good hitter. One and two to Foster. Tying run at third. One out in the ninth. Foster taking a little edge off by backing out. Fly ball, shallow, left. Jastrzemski in. Bench playing down the line, won't go home. Two outs. A big, big out there, Mr. Garagiola. Yes, sir, Ned, and I tell you, it was a pretty good battle. And Drago shaking off to one pitch. I'm sure that uh, Fisk was going to go with the fastball all the way, and many times what you do is put down fastball and have him shake you off. You tell him to shake you off to get that hitter thinking, and what makes you do a thing like that is Foster backing out of the box a couple times. You know he was thinking. That was quite a battle. So now it's down to one out to go for Grego. And a base hit to go for Concepcion if he wants to send this game farther than it is or give the Red Sox a chance in the night. Dave Concepcion is 0 for 3. Grounded to short. Flied out twice. Bench at third. The wind up by Grego. Right. 0 and 1. Up and in again. He is letting out a notch, man. He has really blown that ball. Oh, hit the hard as he's thrown one. <laughs> you notice he's not going to any trick pitches. What got him here is going to get him out of there. Yeah, that's what Concepcion will be looking for. So it's, you know, I got mine, you got yours. Let's see. That may be trouble. Doyle can't make the play, and it's all tied up. Infield hit by Dave Concepcion. No play at all for Denny Doyle except to keep it in the infield. Johnny Bench scores, and the Reds have tied it in the ninth. And here we go again. It was a pitch on the outer edge and tailing in. Could really see Concepcion swing down on that ball, and once it got by Drago, there wasn't much Doyle could do but keep it from going to the outfield. He couldn't really make a throw. He was running too hard. Watch the momentum carry him about three or four more steps. That's the kind when you stop right there, you you just don't know what to do with it. You really want to take a bite out of it is what you want to do. Yeah, or bury it. Right. 
Incidentally, uh, Concepcion's error led to the go-ahead run for the Red Sox, so he evened it up. Griffey is the batter. 0 for 3. Lead run at first. Two outs. Right. Well, you can't really fault Drago. He's uh, poor in the coals. He made a good, powerful pitch, and Concepcion got the bat on it to the right place. I think you pinpointed it well, Ned. I got mine, you got yours. It was strength against strength, and at this particular time, Concepcion uh, won that battle. But you know he's throwing hard because anytime you hear a catcher's glove pop with the gloves they're using today, you really got to throw hard because they're using pillows. That's right. So it's one strike to Griffey. The Red Sox ninth inning will have Burleson, Drago, and Cooper scheduled up. He's keeping him there. got some ideas but Drago's doing a good job he's got a pretty good move for right hander one strike to Griffey I'm gonna send him back there a few more times take a step away and keep him there they want no one at the mid station as they say <laughs> One strike to Griffey with two outs in the top of the ninth. Game tied 2-2. Two -two. One ball, one strike. Griffey has pulled the ball twice to Cooper at first. That was against Lee. Runner going. Throw down there. It's Peyton for second base. And an argument by Burleson. Throw a little bit low by Fisk. Otherwise, he might have had it. He threw that ball straight down. He gets the ball in pretty good shape, but watch him as he comes up. He's, he guns it down. Kind of look right down. Yep. Hell no, no, just a bit too long. Nice pickup of second base by Burleson. Hey. But he was under the tag. <laughs> Got in just under the tag on a pretty close play. Well covered. It's now one and two, and the lead run is in scoring position. A single would put the Reds ahead. A good solid single. One and two the count. Out of play. You know, it's going to sound like a cop out because having been a catcher, but it is a little bit cold here. And I don't care whether you're catching as much as Fisk has. Uh, it's just a little tougher to throw on a day like today. Well, it is. It's, it really uh, is. Fisk had uh, thrown two out in the series. Pretty good save by Burleson, as it turned out. Almost got him. One and two. And again, Griffey hangs tough, spoiling a good pitch. One ball, two strikes. Reds putting on the pressure in the ninth inning, as they have done so often. That's what gets them there, a team that can come back, take advantage of everything. Get the base hit, the off-field base hit by Bench, and then with two outs, the ground ball that scores the run. The Concepcion able to steal a base in the clutch is a pretty good indication of what kind of a ball club it is as far as balance. Absolutely. Well hit to left center. It's in there. A run will score. It goes to the wall. Picked up by Lynn. Double. And it's Reds three, Red Sox two. Ken Griffey with two strikes on him behind on the count one and two picked on the fastball and found the alley with a clutch double and the Reds have gone ahead for the first time in the series. The ball club was down. They were almost saying wait till we get you in our home ballpark but Griffey has just given them a lead 
And Griffey, who has kind of been in the shadows of the benches, Perez, Rose, and Morgans, it was his bunt that uh, beat Pittsburgh, and now it's his extra base hit that puts him ahead. The run charged to Drago. The other two runs charged to Lee. So now the game has really changed around, and the Reds have the advantage, and they are going to put this man on. Geronimo is going to get the walk with first base open, which will uh, send up Eastwick. So intentional pass to Geronimo, who'd gone 0 for 3. And even though he had not had a hit in the series or in postseason playoffs, had gone 0 for 14, still the strategy dictates you've got to put him on. Or else force a pinch hitter for Eastwick. <laughs> Ned, with all it, there is Bob Housen of the Cincinnati Reds, a president. Feeling manager. a lot better now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I started to say, with all the talk about the wall, that's the chairman of the board, Lou Nippert, next to him in a light coat. With all the talk about the wall and what they were going to oh, do, it was a five hopper that Doyle was able to come up with. Oh, it's been the big hit so far. Yeah, and a medium speed ground ball by Perez that got benched to third in the first place. But then, the, of course, uh, it's all academic after the double by Griffin. Eastwick strike one. Well, due to the length of this game and what an exciting game it is, we'll be going right to the football, the Oakland Raiders and Kansas City Chiefs. So we get you into the mood for that game because that'll be a beauty, just like this one is. Doyle to Burleson. Got the bag in time. And Eastwick is out, or he forces out the runner, Geronimo. Four to six, going to the bottom of the ninth. Three to two, Cincinnati. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. So it's the bottom of the ninth inning. Cincinnati leading the Red Sox three to two. Rick Burleson will be first up. There'll be a pinch hitter for Dick Drago and then Cecil Cooper as Raleigh Eastwood has a chance to nail one down in the big one and a very big one for the Reds. Three runs seven hits for Cincinnati one error two runs seven hits no errors for the Red Sox and that's how even the game has been. Ned you've seen the Red Sox all year Well, Burleson is this a bunt situation for him for the base hit. Not often no. I don't think so. We'll see with Rose playing third. I, they want to get a man on right. right. I noticed Bench moved Rose in at third, and that's the reason I ask you. He could do it, but he doesn't often to lead off an inning. We'll see now. Red Sox down by a run. You can play for tie at home. Swinging and off his foot. Oh, boy. And Burleson's caved in a little bit there. There it goes. It's a sinker ball. Fastball in. It goes right down. Right Ouch. off this left foot, boy. And if that doesn't make you late for the dance, nothing will. <laughs> Telling me. Put you in a pair of Richie Hebner shoes, won't it? Oh. I tell you, Tony, I couldn't run anyhow. I wouldn't mind wearing those steel plated uh, those toes that the umpires got in there and wear those shoes because it wouldn't hurt or help my speed. It would help you on a play like that. One strike to Burleson. Ball one. There they are. We get the steel in the toe, and Colossi's got dirt on the heel right now. It's been a long day for him. Pop up, shallow right. Look how shallow Griffey was playing. Foul ball catch. One out. He was way in. Carbo. So Bernie Carbo, who used to play with the Cincinnati Reds, is coming up to bat. He is going to hit for Drago. He's tattooed that wall especially earlier this year, hasn't he, Ned? He has an inside out swing. Has an inside out swing. He uses the wall and he hit a batch of home runs. Had a lot of uh, game winning hits. And he did the same. Well, he went a little farther this year than he did last. Last year was about a half season. He went about three quarters before he started tailing off and he got hurt. 
As I recall, he was uh, involved in a very controversial play with the Reds in a playoff in, uh, when was it, 70, 71, something, play at the plate. Right. He was 0 for 8 in the 1970 series for the Cincinnati Reds. Hit 257 this year with 15 home runs. Eastwick to Carbo. Tried it that time and hit late on the fastball one and he hit the foul ball. Show you what kind of prospect Carbo was. He's going to get a new bat. He may have had it sawed off. He was drafted by the Reds before Johnny Bench. Yeah, he was, and he also was rookie of the year in his first year up in the National League. Made a lot of uh, notoriety last year by carrying a stuffed gorilla around. <laughs> Scipio Spinks had uh, willed him from the Cardinals. Mighty Joe Young, but when some of his teammates tried to burn it in the clubhouse, he decided to send it home. Did, didn't he take that uh, to a coffee shop and order breakfast for it and yeah, then get separate, separate checks? Separate checks, yeah. And the waitress gave him separate checks? <laughs> yeah, he left him in, a, in his bed in uh, Dallas. And uh, the maid came in to make up the room and saw that he was covered up. And she <laughs> flew out of there and thought there was somebody <laughs> in it. <laughs> what is this? One strike to Carbo. Ball one. One and one. The Red Sox are used to garrison finishes, though. They have uh, they may not do it today, but they had a bunch of them here in this ballpark this season. A little looping foul. That's out of play. Eastwick sawed him off that time. So far, they've got a pretty good book on Carbo. That's where they try and pitch him. He drops that bat. A little more of an outside hitter and low ball hitter if it's away. In the old days, Tony, you'd say you aim for the belt buckle, but with these uniforms, you don't you just aim for the middle of them. They just jam him with that slider, and they really, that was a perfect pitch. One and two to Bernard. Bernardo. Stings one to left. It is going to be caught by Foster. Went to the opposite field, but Foster was playing him just right. And now there are two downs, and the Red Sox are down to their last out. Cecil Cooper is up. He is one for four. He doubled to left in the first inning. The other three times up, he grounded out. The crowd, which was roaring before, quieted in the top of the ninth, and they're still quiet. Playing tight on the lines. Deep in right field to protect against the extra base hit. What a hole he's got down the right field line. He's in got the outfield. a lot of green there to aim for. You've got to see all that space between Griffey and the foul pole. Ball one. One ball, one strike to Cooper. Reds leading 3-2 in the ninth. Two out. This should do it. Popped up towards short. Concepcion there. And that's it as the Reds take it in the second game of the series. Three up and three down in the ninth inning. Nothing across. The final score, Cincinnati beating the Red Sox 3-2 to two with a winner, Eastwick, and the loser, Dick Drago. Well, a happy Cincinnati ball club heading for the clubhouse. It really picked them up. It was Johnny Bench who got it started in the ninth inning. And after two outs, Concepcion's base hit an infield hit. Scored Bench would move to third on a bouncing ball by Perez, a double by Griffey, and it's three to two. And that's it. The final score once again, Cincinnati three, Boston two. The World Series is tied at a game apiece. This is Joe Garagiola with Ned Martin and Tony Kubek saying goodbye from Boston.